Okay, so as a continuation, so we're now on uh, hyperbolic functions. So particularly the identities for hyperbolic function. Hyperbolic functions are actually special case of an exponential function uh, wherein it involves the combination of the e raised to negative x and e raised to x. So particularly, uh, for example, so when we say the hyperbolic uh, sine of x, so that is equivalent to e raised to x minus e raised to negative x all over 2. And then the sum, uh, that will correspond to the hyperbolic cosine. And then for the other identities, so it has a uh, resemblance with the identities for uh, the identities for trigo. However, there's a difference on the sign. Uh, so since all of those are anchored to the identities involving the exponential function. So for tangent, so that would still be uh, sine, hyperbolic sine over hyperbolic cosine. And then cosecant, this is still the inverse of sine. So second, hyperbolic second is the inverse of hyperbolic cosine. And cotangent is the inverse of hyperbolic uh, tangent of x. Okay, so this is how we read uh, hyperbolic tangent. So we start with hyperbolic and then what would be the trigo function? Hyperbolic tangent of x, for example. And these are some of the hyperbolic identities. Uh, as I've mentioned, so there's a difference on the sign. Uh, in trigo, so we have cosine squared plus sine squared is equals to 1, so using the Pythagorean theorem. But for the hyperbolic identity, so it becomes minus. Okay, so cosine squared x minus sine squared x is equals to 1. And then for tangent, okay, so that will be uh, tang hyperbolic tangent of hyperbolic tangent of x squared. And then the square of the hyperbolic second of x is equal to 0. Then for cotangent and cosecant, so it would just be minus. Although we have the uh, hyperbolic sine. So for sine is sin cos cosine, follow the sine. For cosine, cos cos, sin sin. Okay, so the difference of the... Uh, sum and difference of hyperbolic sine or the sum and difference of the angle of a an hyperbolic sine and a hyperbolic cosine again it's just the sine so sine it's the same so for cosine it's different okay so we we just follow if this is positive this is positive it's negative negative if it's positive it's positive if it's negative it's negative so for the triangle it's different Okay, so for the cosine, it will be inverse. If this is positive, this one will be negative. If this is negative, this one will be positive. But that is for trigo. And then, so for the double angle, it's the same for sine, but it's different for cosine. Okay, so hyperbolic cosine. In the regular cosine, this will be minus. Okay. But in the regular sine, or in the hyperbolic cosine, it's plus. So with regards to this, so they were just derived from here. So you just need to, I said the basic that you need to remember that you need to recall would be this two plus this three, and then you can go on. So for the derivatives of hyperbolic functions, it's still the same with uh, trigo. The only difference is the sign again. So again in in trigo functions. So as long as the function starts with letter C, so its derivative will be negative. Okay? However, in hyperbolic functions, it's not. Okay? Uh, positive are the six basic or the three uh, most commonly used uh, trigo function, the sine, cosine, and then the tangent. And then the inverse of all of those, okay, or sorry, uh, the... Okay, so the negative so will be uh, the inverse. So the inverse of all of those functions. So the inverse of sine is called sine is 
cosecant, so it, it's negative. For cosine, it's second, it's negative. For tangent, it's cotangent, and it's negative. So that's how we recall the uh, formula for the derivatives of hyperbolic functions. So all of the common uh, trigo functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, hyperbolic sine, cosine, and tangent, will all be positive. So negative will be the inverse of those three common trigo functions. Okay, so let's have uh, the following. So we are just going to verify. So whether the hyperbolic cosine of x minus the hyperbolic sine of x is equal to e raised to negative x. So remember that in, uh, or for the hyperbolic cosine of x, so that would be e raised to x plus e raised to negative x will be, and then divide it with 2. And then for the hyperbolic sine of x, that is e raised to x minus e raised to negative x all over 2. So we just substitute. So this would be e raised to x plus e raised to negative x all over 2. Then minus e raised to x minus e raised to negative x all over 2 will be equal to e raised to negative x. So we take the LCD so to be equal to 2. So e raised to x plus e raised to negative x. And we distribute the negative sign. So minus e raised to x. So negative and negative that would be plus e raised to negative x, so which will be equal to e raised to negative x. So e x minus e x will be 0, and then e raised to negative x plus e raised to negative x will be 2 e raised to negative x. Then divide it by 2. So negative 2 or 2 will be cancelled out, so therefore e raised to negative x is equal to e raised to negative x as well. So proving that uh, hyperbolic cosine of x minus the hyperbolic sine of x is equal to e raised to x. Okay, so for the second one, so we have e raised to 2x is equal to sine 2x plus cosine h2x. Uh, so remember on our formula that the hyperbolic cosine of x is e raised to 2x plus e raised to negative x all over 2. So it also follows that if we have a double angle, okay, so it follows that uh, hyperbolic sine of 2x would be the same as e raised to 2x minus e raised to negative 2x all over 2. So similarly, the hyperbolic cosine of 2x will be e raised to 2x plus e raised to negative 2x all over 2. Okay. Uh, the angle so would correspond to the exponent of the exponential function. So therefore, so doing so, so e raised to 2x then would be equivalent to, so hyperbolic sine is e raised to 2x minus e raised to negative 2x divided with 2. And plus e raised to 2x plus e raised to negative 2x all over 2. So e raised to 2x then. So since this is just plus, uh, so this one would be cancelled out. So the negative and the positive. So e2x plus e2x is 2 e raised to 2x. Then divide it by 2. So 2 would be cancelled out. Thus, e raised to 2x is equals to e raised to 2x as well. Okay? So those are the uh, relation of the hyperbolic sine and cosine with respect to exponential functions. So that's how we verify. Okay, so next we have a series of examples on how to find the derivative of hyperbolic functions. So we'll start with hyperbolic sine of 2x. So number 5, so we have f of x as hyperbolic sine of 2x. So remember that the derivative of uh, hyperbolic sine of u, that would be equal to hyperbolic cosine of 
uh, u and then we derive u so with respect to x so in this case our u is 2x so its derivative with respect to x is actually equal to 2 so therefore our f prime of x will be hyperbolic cosine of u so which is 2x and then the derivative of uh, d over dx it's 2 or so that will become the coefficient so 2 hyperbolic cosine of 2x so this is a direct application of the derivative of hyperbolic sine of u So how about if it is second 5x squared? Second 5x squared. Again, so this is a direct substitution. So the derivative of hyperbolic second of 5x squared. So since this is not a basic so this is the inverse of the common 3 so this would be negative and then uh, hyperbolic second of u and then hyperbolic tangent of u and then we multiply it with the derivative of u with respect to x so again our u is 5x squared so its derivative so with respect to x will be 10x so y prime then so will be so negative hyperbolic second of 5x squared and then hyperbolic tangent of 5x squared and we multiply it with the derivative so which is 10x so therefore y prime will be negative 10x hyperbolic second of 5x squared plus hyperbolic tangent of 5x squared so again it's a direct substitution okay so this one is the combination of the logarithm and the hyperbolic sign seven is y is equals to that is ln of the hyperbolic sine of x. So again, so the derivative of ln u, that is 1 over u, so multiply it with du over dx. So u is hyperbolic sine of x. So its derivative is hyperbolic cosine of x the derivative of x is just one so therefore this would be uh, y prime so our du so this is du with respect to x i will just have one over u first so u is hyperbolic sine of x and then du over dx is hyperbolic cosine of x so y prime is hyperbolic cosine of x and then the hyperbolic sine of x so which is an identity called the hyperbolic cotangent of x so hyperbolic cotangent of x number eight so it's arc sine of hyper Verbolic tangent of x. Number eight is y is equals to arc sine of hyperbolic tangent of x. So the derivative of arc sine, arc sine of u. So that will be 1 over the square root of 1 minus u squared and multiply it with the derivative of u with respect to x. So our u here 
is hyperbolic tangent of x so du then would be uh, so this will be positive hyperbolic uh, or the square of the hyperbolic second of x and the derivative of x it's just zero it's just one so this would be our du over dx hyperbolic or the square of the hyperbolic second of x okay so our y then so will be our y prime so we'll have one over the square of one minus u is hyperbolic tangent so this would be uh tangent squared or hyperbolic tangent uh, or the square of the hyperbolic tangent of x and then multiply it with d over dx so which is a second or the square of the hyperbolic second of x okay but then remember that uh, the hyperbolic the square of the hyperbolic sine of x plus the square of the hyperbolic second of x is actually equal to 1. So therefore, the square of the hyperbolic second of x is 1 minus the square of the hyperbolic tangent of x. So I uh, let this one at the topmost or at the numerator and then one minus uh, the square of the hyperbolic tangent of x it's the same as the square root of hyperbolic second. And then that's a square root. So that would just be hyperbolic second of x. Then would be cancelled out. So we just have second hyperbolic second of x. Number eight. So for number 9, it's product x cos minus sine. Number 9, y is x hyperbolic cosine of x minus hyperbolic sine of h. Is that correct? Okay, minus. So, uh, again, so in here, so this one would become our u, this one becomes our v. So u is x, so it's derivative, it's 1. So v is hyperbolic cosine of h, or hyperbolic cosine of x. So dv will be just simply hyperbolic sine of x. And then y prime then, so we're going to use u dv. So x, then hyperbolic sine of x, plus v du. So that would just be hyperbolic cosine of x. And then minus the derivative of hyperbolic sine. So it would be hyperbolic cosine. And that will cancel out. So y prime is simply x times hyperbolic sine of x. So using the product rule. Number 10, okay, so hyperbolic cosine of 8x plus 
this this one. Okay. So our U here just be eight x plus one, and then our D would be eight. So this is very direct. So y prime will be cosine will be sine of eight x plus one. Then we multiply it with eight. I'm just going to write here. So that would just be 8 hyperbolic sine of 8x plus 1. So you may expand this one. So using the sum of two angles for hyperbolic sine. Uh, however, it will just lengthen the answer. So we'll just leave it as, his, as this one. That is 10. So for 11, so ln... Hyperbolic tangent of x all over 2. So we have half an angle. So with our u here, so will be hyperbolic tangent of x all over 2. Then it's derivative. So it will be Tangent is second, right? So second squared hyperbolic second or the square of the hyperbolic second of uh, it's x over 2 and derivative of x all over 2 would be 1 half. Okay, so that would be our d over dx. 1 half hyperbolic second squared x all over 2 and then our y prime then so will be uh, d over u so which is one half and then uh, hyperbolic second squared x all over 2 divided with tangent x all over 2 uh, let's try to simplify this one so we'll have one half Second is the same as 1 over cosine, right? So this would be 1 all over cosine, hyperbolic cosine x all over 2. And everything is divided by, so tangent is sine squared x all over 2 all over cosine squared x all over 2. Or, sorry. We don't have the square there. So we can have this one as one half. All right. So one half. Uh, one over hyperbolic cosine and the square. And I multiply it with the reciprocal. So this would cancel out, so leaving us to have 1 there. So in short, so we just have 1 all over 2. And I'll start with sine. Hyperbolic sine x all over 2. And then hyperbolic cosine of x all over 2. Then remember that we have... Uh, sine or the hyperbolic sine of let's say u 2u that's the same as 2 hyperbolic sine of u uh, cosine or hyperbolic cosine of u so therefore if we have 2 and then our u there is hyperbolic sine of x all over 2 hyperbolic sine of x all over 2 so this one will become our u is x all over 2 2 times x all over 2 or simply it's just the hyperbolic sine of x it's the same as 2 hyperbolic sine of x all over 2 hyperbolic cosine of x all over 2 so therefore y prime then so will be 1 
all over hyperbolic sine of x so we're in the hyperbolic sine of x it's the same as the hyperbolic cosine of or cosecant of x so that would just be our y prime then lastly so we have second or the square of hyperbolic cosine 3x okay so this is it's just easy so why would be uh, the square of so we just use chain rule so 2 and then uh, cosine hyperbolic cosine of 3x and then it's derivative so will be uh, hyperbolic sine of 3x then multiply it with 3 so y prime then we could have 3 multiply it with 2 hyperbolic cosine of 3x hyperbolic sine of 3x as well but again so this is cosine 2 cosine and sine so that is double angle so therefore that would just be 3 and then hyperbolic sine of 2 times 3x okay this would be 2 times 3x so that's 2u so therefore y prime would be 3 hyperbolic sine of 6x and that sets all the problems okay so for hyperbolic functions that will be all good day.